Good morning, Stag Lovers. Uh, welcome to Yorkshire Classic Cars Limited again. Uh, here in pouring it down Retford, you can probably hear the rain on the roof, don't know if you can hear that or not, but anyway, it taps away. Um, what I'm going to do today is a quick video on um, checking the tappets and shims clearances, camshaft clearances, on a Stag Triumph V8. Uh, this is the original V8, obviously if it was a Rover V8, somebody would put in there it wouldn't be standard. Um, and they have hydraulic followers anyway, so they don't have a need checking particularly on the preload. Um, this car is one I restored about two or three years ago, I think. I finished the restoration on it. Um, the engine was built before I got it. Um, so I replaced the engine, it had all been rebuilt uh, as far as the customer was concerned. Um, it's developed a very light tapping from the offside camshaft area. Now, there are a number of reasons you might hear a tap. It sounds like a tick, 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 tick. It comes and it goes, which I don't think it's the camshaft. Now, the engine was supposed to have been fully rebuilt. It was supposed to have had new cam chains and everything. So it's unlikely it's the cam chains, but I will check those, check all the, um, all the tensioners and everything first. Um, then I'm going to check all the camshaft clearances just to be on the safe side. It could be those, it might not be. I, I'd be very surprised. The first thought I had is either something you get quite a lot if you replace the oil pump for a new one, uh, they tend to run at slightly higher pressure and as the oil pressure relief valve opens and closes you get a, a tapping then, a clonking. Um, it usually sounds like a big end's gone, it's dong, 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 dong. And it sounds just like that. Um, this doesn't sound like that to me. But it could be that, it has had a new oil pump put on there, I've put a, had a look under there, it's an aftermarket oil pump. The other thing that can end up sounding like a big end is the viscous fan. Now this viscous fan is very tight, but it doesn't rattle. So I'm absolutely concerned, uh, convinced sorry, that that isn't the problem. Um, so I'm going to whip this rocker cover off this side, have a quick look down at the tensioners, the, the timing chains and everything, look at the condition of those. Generally, timing chain noise is, is a clatter. It, it sounds like somebody putting a metal bucket full of nuts and bolts and putting a, a food blender in it. Um, I've had them like that drive in uh, where they've been started to chew up the front timing cover. So again, I don't think it's that. I think it could possibly be uh, one of the clearances just slightly off. And when it's filling up with oil, it's taking out that extra clearance. It could be oil contamination. I don't know when this oil was last changed. I've drained it, it's quite black. Um, carburetor fed engines inevitably get some fuel contamination in the, uh, in the oil, thins it out, makes them clatter a little bit, um, hence why you need to do regular oil changes. I know it's expensive but it's a lot cheaper than replacing your engine. Um, often stag engines can get a tappety noise, uh, a top end rattle camshafty noise, um, and that can actually be a side loading on the bucket um, where the shim is housed. So what you need to do also is, as I turn the engine over, I'll be checking those for side clearance. Now, if it's just a mild tappety noise from that, my advice would be, I mean, it is a very quiet noise. I'm not going to start here because you won't hear it anyway, and then the engine will be warm and I can't check the clearances. Um, if it is that, I, I would advise just leaving it. it it's not going to get any worse, and if it does, then take it out and do it. You can get oversized buckets, 10th hour oversized buckets, but you do need to have the head machined. The head has to come off, obviously, and be rebuilt, so it becomes a huge expensive job. Uh, and for this amount of noise, personally, it wouldn't bother me. It's up to the customer if he wants to have that done. I'm perfectly happy to do that for him and have that done for him. But it's, you know, I, I don't think it would be an emergency job like that. So, first thing I've got here. The old straight screwdriver, I'm just going to whip the rocket box cover off, the uh, cam cover off, and take a look inside. Okay, so. so there's the, uh, that's the cam cover, rocket box cover, whatever you want to call it really, is off. Uh, you can see the cam chain here. Um, I will be turning this engine over to check these clearances, obviously. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the spark plugs out of it all, both sides. As you can see, I've got a new set here ready to go in anyway as part of the service, so they need to be done. Uh, everything looks clean in here. I've had a quick look at the camshaft. There's not a huge amount of wear on the lobes. There's no scarring or damage. It appears to have been a new camshaft at some point. 
So it doesn't look like oil starvation for start for 10, so that's always good. Um, now I'm gonna have to look down inside the cam chain box there with a torch. I don't think you'll be able to see the tensioners in there. I'll get my torch a sec. So um, I'm in struggle to find my torch. I think you should be able to see the tensioner there. If I zoom in a little, it may struggle to focus in, but there's the tensioner um, there. It's quite difficult to see, but actually that is absolutely fine. The amount that that's protruding there is absolutely spot on for a new tensioner, so there's no issues there at all. Um, it's certainly not overstretched. The other one I, you won't be able to see on the camera, but it is down there and I can see it and it's fine. So the chains are actually fine. Um, so what I'll progress to do here is now is to go through these, check them one at a time and just check for side loading on the buckets. Now, obviously these spin in the cylinder head. So you do get wear in there sometimes, or if you get any detritus, or if the oil hasn't been changed recently. Now, going back to the oil thing I said earlier about there could be oil contamination. If you look at the oil, it's fairly dark in there, which doesn't really bode well. Um, I do know this car gets quite a lot of mileage. It gets quite a lot of use. Uh, the owner's keen to use it whenever he can, so he goes to work in it and all sorts. So it does get driven quite, quite a lot. Um, and it does smell a little fuely and it does seem thin now if I just dip my finger in that you know this is a 2050 and it, it's quite watery so I suspect that is the only issue but I did say I will go through these uh, I'd rather check them and find nothing wrong than not check them and miss that there is something wrong so I'll go through those and start and check those and I'll show you how I do that with the shims uh, and with the feeler gauges so I'll grab my feeler gauges and do that for you plugs are out. Uh, I have actually taken them out of both sides, obviously. Um, I only montaged this side for obvious reasons. It's a pretty easy job. Uh, what I did find whilst I was doing that was this plug was only screwed in, not even finger tight really. As you can see, there's been quite a lot of blow out of there. Um, it's been blowing oil and muck and fuel and all sorts of stuff up that plug. Um, that might be the noise. Uh, that was this one here. Um, so that might actually be the noise because that did seem to be where it was coming from and it's been blocking up over time then stopping it. But you can see the, the muck on there. If I show you the other ones, they're all clean all the way up. Um, a couple of them were actually loose. That one was the worst of the lot. It was only screwed in three quarters of the way. Now then, um, what I've also done here you should be able to see there. Sorry about the shadow. Let me move around. I've drawn up a little grid. Um, it's labelled exhaust, inlet, inlet, exhaust, exhaust, inlet, inlet, exhaust. This is to write down my clearances. Um, so I, the first one is obviously the exhaust. You can see it there. That's the outlet. This lobe here. This lobe and this lobe are inlets. This lobe and this lobe are outlets. These are inlets and that's an outlet. You can see where the exhaust is. Now, obviously the valve clearances, tappet clearances are different for each um, inlet and exhaust valve, okay? You obviously always have bigger clearances on the exhaust side because it's always a hotter on, on those valves and they expand more and you need a little bit more clearance on them. Um, to check these clearances, uh, I've gone by the Haynes manual as ever. The exhaust is 16 to 18 thou, the inlet is 8 to 10 thou, so anything between those figures is fine. If it's 8 thou, it's fine. If it's 10 thou, it's fine. If it's 9 thou, it's fine for an inlet. If it's 11 or if it's 7 or worse, it's wrong. Either way, you check every single solitary one and write it in here, okay? I'll show you why in a second. Now, to check the clearance... You'll see here that that cam is, and it's quite difficult to see on the camera. I shall try and show it that way. The cam lobe is actually vertically opposite, opposing the bucket underneath it. It doesn't quite look like it on there, 
but trust me, it is. It's quite difficult to see on the camera. Um, these don't have quieting ramps that you have to worry about, so that is the heel of the camshaft, and that's where you check the clearance. So, I will set my feeler gauge up. That is obviously an inlet. I'm not doing them in order down the cam. You can if you wish. I will show you what I do to remember which one is which in a second. So I'll set up my feeler gauges and off we go. Right. So, uh, I have a set of feeler gauges that has every thickness in there. If you have to use two feeler gauges together, for example, to make eight thou, try not to use a seven and a one or something like that because you'll tend to find the one goes all wiggly wobbly. Try and use a three and a four off. That's just a little bit of a, you know, free advice. That's in my experience, it works a lot better. But I, luckily these are, they're not very expensive, but this has every size in there from one right through to, God only knows what thou in there at 50 thou. So um, these are a lot easier. As you can see, 10 thou gets a lot of use. Um, so I've got the two settings there for my inlet. So what I'm looking to do is, I'm gonna start with the eight there. And I'm going to slide that in there. Now, you'll see, I'm having to curve her a little bit. It feels like a tight fit, but it isn't, okay? It's because it's curved a little bit. That's actually quite a slack fit, is that one. The tenth out is a good fit, okay? That's, that, I would say that is probably tenth out. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to get another feeler out, probably get an 11 thou out or maybe a 12 and see if that will fit in there. You always get in the book, it says, make sure it's a, a sliding fit with just a little bit of grab and blah, blah, blah. And it, it's literally like really difficult to interpret. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my 12 thou out there, try to do it one handed, which is really difficult. And I can't get that in. Okay. So 12 thou will not fit. Um, therefore it isn't two thou over for a start of a 10. Now, what I will do is I will check it with an 11 thou, but I would suggest that feels to me a good 10 thousandths of an inch. I won't have an 11 thou, I don't think. Oh, I do have 11 thou, sorry, stand corrected, it does have that one. So I will try and get 11 thou in there. If that one fits, it does not. As you can see, that is not going in, okay? Um, you shouldn't need to force it. So that is 10 thou, which is within tolerance. So what I'm going to do now, that's this lobe here, which is my second inlet along my list. So I'm going to go up to my sheet here and I'm going to put 0 0.01. So that is 10 thou and that is fine. So I'm going to put a little tick on it. Now, I'm going to continue to check all of these and write them down as I go along. Uh, what I will do is, my battery's going a little bit flat, so I just need to put my camera on charge. So what I'll do is, I'll do each one at a time. If I find any anomalies, I'll show you those at the time. Okay. Right, welcome back. Uh, I've checked all but two of these. I'm just going to check the last two with you watching. Uh, I'm just coming around to check this one here. Now, to pos position the engine, uh, I don't really like using a bump starter or anything like that. So I've got it in fourth gear. You could just roll the engine back off fourth. You can see the camshaft moving there. He says, just keep going, I'm going backwards at the moment, which makes the camshaft rotate clockwise when viewed from the rear here. Bang on there, I'm checking this exhaust load here. Okay, missing from my list. Just check, you can actually see what I'm doing there. I'll zoom in a little bit. There, that one there, just to the left. Oops, sorry. There, you're actually stood on a cardboard box. There's no expense spent at Yorkshire Classic Cars Limited here. This is a working garage, not just a work, not just a YouTube studio. Uh, like an idiot, I've shut down my feeler gauges again. Every single time I do that, because I'm a donkey. ER. 18. 16, okay, it's an exhaust. So first in with the 16. Then with the two, try and get it as flat as possible. It's loose, but not particularly. And the 18 is a good tight fit. Yeah, that one's fine. So then for 
I'm just going to check the next size up on that. It's a tiny bit loose. I can assure you this isn't one of those. I've prepared a couple that are a bit iffy. Just to prove what happens and, you know, just to make uh, good viewing. I haven't pre-checked it. I can assure you that. If I take a nine... There will be a 19 in there somewhere, but I'm not spending all day looking for it. Always be careful. You notice there that I've picked up two, two uh, feeler gauges at the same time. Do not do that. So 19 will not fit. So that is 18. So right on the list again, 18 thou. Give it a tick because it's within tolerance. Then I'm going to check this inlet here. Um, I'll zoom you across to the back inlet there, the rearmost inlet, which is the second lobe from the left as you're viewing it. Just going to go forwards again. Uh, backwards. No, oh, backwards, sorry. We've got enough room like that. The clonking noise in here as the engine turns over is actually the bottom hose touching the fan on the alternator. If you ever get a funny whirry noise, that's often what's happened. The, the, the metal hose has moved across. I've got that hose disconnected at the moment because I'm flushing the coolant on this car as we speak. Um, you may or may not have noticed the drain plug. If you're going to flush the coolant on a, on a stag, you can't just take the radiator bottom hose off. That will only drain the radiator. You do need to drain the block. There are two block drains on either side of the block. I had video doing it, but literally the most awkward thing to see in the world. Uh, so that's it. We'll knock around to gear, just so I don't move it inadvertently. See if you can see it. Yep. I'm sure the people on the estate near me think I've gone absolutely mental. Uh, twittering away to myself, but to be honest, they've probably heard it before. It may not come as that much of a shock, if I'm really honest. So there's 10 thou, there's 9 thou, and weirdly 8 thou isn't next to them, which is the weirdest thing in the world, but there you go. Ours is not to reason why, ours is just a feeler gauge and why. Check you've only got one feeler gauge. Yep. 8 thou into there. Sliding fit, nine thou reasonably loose, ten thou quite, quite tight now, all the way through, so it's a ten thou fit. I can check it with an eleven, I'd rather be safe than sorry. Literally takes thirty milliseconds. Yeah, eleven doesn't fit, so that's ten thou again. Okay, so all of those actually check out correctly, okay? Right, so um, all those shims have obviously checked out fine, the noise is not coming from there. However, if it was, I'm just going to show you how to work out what shim you need to replace with. Um, to do that, you would first need to remove the lock tabs here. These are 716 uh, AF heads on a quarter UNF screw, okay? Uh, pretty chewed up lock tabs to be fair. These would then push back, this bracket here pushes back and you put a 516 nut on there. Now you do that first, if possible, then rotate the engine carefully and undo these two screws, okay? Then this cam gear will retain its tension and you can move it away from the camshaft, okay? Now, when I do that, just to be on the safe side, I put a little mark on here. You can just turn it to TDC, there is a mark on here at TDC, there is a mark on here at TDC, so you can move that to this mark on that main, uh, that camshaft cap there, look, okay? Whichever you prefer, but I, I, I just like to put a, a permanent marker on there or something, or a little bit of Tipex or a little bit of paint marker, whichever you've got. Then, carefully, diametrically, so start in the middle and move them out, unscrew these nuts. Now, I go a tiny little bit at a time, okay? So click, 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 just break the, break the tightness on them and then run them off 
pray a couple of turns, couple of turns, couple of turns, couple of turns. You've got to remember there is valve spring pressure on a number of these now. You can see that this one is at full lift. So there's going to be spring pressure here. This one is at full lift. This is at half lift. This is at half lift, okay? If you just take these ones off here, it's going to break that camshaft or it's going to damage these caps, okay? Or the journals, in which case you're in a world of pain and expense. Remove those carefully. Lay a piece of card or hardboard or something on there on your air filter. Or if you're using the standard carburetors, obviously you would have had to remove all that. Lay them out on the floor so you know which nut and which washer came from each cap. And then put the caps down in the order they came off and the direction they came off. Okay? They are all numbered, but it doesn't mean somebody hasn't messed them up in the past or used an odd cap or something like that. Make sure they all go back. If it's working now, it'll work when you put it back together again. Keep them all together. Then you will need to remove the bucket. The bucket is the part that the camshaft rubs on underneath. And inside or under that bucket, should be inside, there will be a shim. These are stag shims in here. Okay, these are all different thicknesses. Some are pre-loved, as you can see by the big dent in the middle of that one. Okay, that's really worn is that, but these are worth keeping just in case you can't get any more. I inherited these from York's Triumphs. They were all in order, as you can see, each one was numbered. Uh, and I dropped the box when I inherited them. They are now not in order. They're in some sort of an order. I'm not really sure what it is. I started writing them on, but, you know, I've better things to do with my time than that. I will show you how to check the shim thickness uh, accurately, because obviously if there is wear on the shim, it will not be accurate anymore. You need to know what that thickness is. It's difficult to calculate out that shim, okay? You may find that that dent has appeared where the valve stem is, okay, the top of the valve stem. If that is the case, you may, when you measure up, realize that the actual shim is the correct thickness and all you need to do is buy another one without the wear in the middle, okay? Um, I, I, I have seen these turned over before and used the other way up. Uh, I'm told you're not supposed to do that, uh, but it's worked perfectly fine whenever I've seen it, so, you know, you're probably safe just to replace them. Okay, so I'll go show you how to calculate which shim you need. Just bear with me. Right, so uh, hopefully you can see that. Um, here you can see my micrometers that I use for measuring. If you don't know how to use a micrometer, okay, you open it. You place what it is you're measuring in there, okay, and then you tighten it with that little part there, the clutch. When it stops and clicks, okay, that's when you're there, all right? And then you have to read it on the vernier scale. If you've got some with a dial or a digital, that's significantly easier. You can use a vernier caliper. Uh, I find them a little bit hit and miss, quite honestly. Uh, I prefer to use a micrometer. I prefer to use an old school micrometer that I'm not going to go into reading. If you want to learn how to do it, I'm sure somebody will do a talk through on that. Um, I did have some very, very nice ones, but uh, they got stolen many, many years ago. So what I've done is, I've done a hypothetical inlet shin okay the clearance should be eight thou to ten thou boom all right when you've measured it hypothetically speaking the clearance was actually 15 thou and it was noisy you've got that familiar tick 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 tap it noise <laughs> you know uh, not a donk 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 that's a big end that's a fan that's an oil pump something like that uh, you've whipped out the existing shim all right you've done all that camshaft uh, debacle you've got the shim out you've found out that that shim is 32 thou thick, all right? Uh, so what you need to do to get your new shim, now you've checked it, the shim is flat, there is no recess in the middle, hypothetically, okay? You've checked that 32 thou shim. If there was just a recess in the middle and it looked like you could check it with your verniers and, uh, with your micrometers, sorry, and find out that actually that's probably the clearance issue, then I, that's, that's usually what it is anyway, to be fair. Then I would just put a new shim in there the same thickness and you're probably fine, okay? Your new shim would have to remove that, all right? We're five thou over here. We're actually five to seven thou over. So what we need to do is add to that shim 0 0.005 to 0 0.007. Now, some shims aren't available. So hypothetically, you, you, your tightest shim Uh, your loosest shim, sorry, stand corrected, is actually 5,000. So that will give you your new shim thickness of 0.037. 
37th thou. You probably can't get a 37th thou, okay? Or 0 0.032 plus 7th thou, which brings that up to a 39. All right? You're adding thickness to it to remove the extra gap out of there, all right? If it's too loose, you have to add to it. If it's too tight, you have to remove material away. Try to remember it like that, it's easier, all right? The chances are you'll only get a 38, which would be bang, bang square in the middle, okay? And that would be a 38 thou shim. Um, that would go back in there, and that would remove the noise from your engine. Now then, if you do all that, obviously don't do one at a time, try it, and then turn it off for 24 hours. What you need to do is do that for all your, your um, camshaft clearances, tappet clearances. If you find that any of them are off, do all that. Put it back together, obviously with oil and water and blah, 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 blah. Usually you wouldn't drain those if you're doing this job necessarily. I've got those drained because the car's been serviced. Start it up. Um, it'll be quiet. It'll be absolutely dead quiet and you'll go, boom, we're there. Let the engine warm up to its, its heat cycle and get up to temperature. Then you will discover there is a tappet, and what you will discover is you've probably added it up or taken it off or you're a thou out on one of them. It's so easily done. I've done it a couple of times. Um, I've done loads and loads and loads and loads of these tappets. It's quite an easy mistake to make. So all of a sudden you've still got a tick, 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 quiet little noise in there and you swear a little bit. You get some A-level grade swearing, maybe a degree level swearing at this point because you're really annoyed because now you've got to shut that engine down and leave it for another 24 hours at least to cool right down. Do not take those feeler gauges out at that point. You are wasting your time. Everything has expanded. The gaps will be wrong. It doesn't all expand by the same rate. Okay? It should. I know it should, but it doesn't. Let it all the oil drain down. Let the engine cool stone cold. Go through it all again. Do it all again. Check them all again. Change them all again. You will probably find, if you've still got tapping noise, that one of them has the same issue that I showed you in the last uh, part of the video. So one of your uh, shims has got a recess in the middle like that. Let me see if I can close you in on that. You can see that recess there. That is on the valve stem and that is adding extra clearance. And obviously you've got a gap there. Um, you can't machine these shims. They are case hardened. That means they're only hardened a few thousandths of an inch on the outside. If you machine them, it'll just, it's gonna ruin it. You can't grind them, you can't square them down. You can't do anything with them, unfortunately. <laughs> People do, and then all you're gonna end up with is shards of metal in your engine as, as your valves eat the way through it. And you can end up with a serious failure. For what the cost, just do it right, okay? Get the shims, get it right. Um, some of these are old shims. I don't use old shims back in. Some of them are new shims. Um, the only reason I keep them is if push comes to shove and you have to use one of the old ones, that's all you can do. Um, but obviously not an ideal situation. But that, if you zoom in or if you pause it there, that should probably help you. But that's what you need to do to take that out. So we need to remove five to seven thou. So we're making that shim five to seven thou thicker. Okay, so we're going 37 to 39 thou, 38 being ideal, square in the middle. Um, you don't gain anything by setting them too tight, all you do is increase and accelerate wear. Right, that's the end of the video, that's fine, I'm going to change the oil in that, start it up and see if it's fine. Obviously if it isn't, then there's something else to look at. I know the cam chains are good, I know the uh, shims are all good and correct. I suspect it's either the oil pump or... Um, it's the oil was just thinned out from being worn. It's allowing extra clearance in there. Obviously, all these shims and things take account of the thickness of the oil. Always use a good quality 2050. Change it regularly. Um, always use a blue glycol antifreeze, especially in a, well, in a stag engine particularly. Um, they are extremely sensitive to antifreeze. Right, that's in the video. Okay, more to come, especially on stags. Thank you. Goodbye.